Hi. Kind of setting up for an event later today. Some food stuff. You know, there's been a change. You know, in the way a lot of things happen. Hold on a minute. Let me grab something. Okay, I'm back. And I'm not touching food or anything. I'm just prepping beverages in in places so that it's easier to just pop the ice in and and get things moving later in the day when I need it. But there have been a lot of changes about how things are happening with food lately. You know, you may have seen other content creators talking about all the stuff that's in our food, the bugs that are in our food. Bugs have been in our food for a long time, just saying. Especially things like peanut butter and on fruit. If you're not taking a lot of time to wash that stuff and keep it clean, you're probably eating bugs. Sorry, it's the truth. But anyway, even food shelves, because I volunteer at a variety of food shelves, and I do a lot of food related things, you know, more than just, you know, coming on here and cooking from time to time. Um, food shelves in the community are filling the crunch too. We've known them in the past to be our mainstay, to be able to have what we need so that we can give to those in need or go there to be the receiver of what we need when times are a little bit hard. But now, within the past few months, I've noticed that some food shelves have shut down completely. Some volunteer meal service programs have shut down completely or they change their guidelines to instead of working with a large number of people they're working with very few people or very few groups or serving few people or only working within one zip code that has a small amount of people rather than working within five zip codes where they're actually getting the food out to more people are becoming discouraged and kind of in a state of, I don't know what to do, but I just want to put a word out there to encourage people. Not saying that free stuff is coming to you. We all love free stuff, right? I like free stuff. Sometimes. Sometimes there's a catch to that free stuff. Point is, know your body. Know what you need to be eating, what's going to be right and healthy for you, so that you can continue to move forward and do good things for yourself in your life. I have kidney disease. I get on here and I talk about that sometimes. I talk about it on other social media platforms. Yes, it's a reality in my life. And one in seven people in America has kidney disease. Most don't know about it. When they do find out they have kidney disease, it's usually too late and they're kind of at the end of the road. I'm kind of at that middle point. It's a point where I can actively make changes now to halt or slow down things or I can keep doing what I've always been doing in the past and watch things progress in a negative way. I don't want to see things progress in a negative way. Food shelves and our food resources, you know, they're out there. You have to look a little harder now, but they're kind of out there, inter dispersed in different places in the community, north, south, east, west, wherever. Um, there are some farmers that still want to do what they do and then go and, and have a farmer's market thing on the weekends or certain days during the week. There were some farmers that used to sell their product just one-on-one, -on -one, but FDA didn't really like that sort of stuff. I used to visit those farmers. Um, I'll, I'll admit it. I visited those farmers to get good, wholesome, fresh food. I never got sick from it. Never. Um... The things are changing. If you're growing your own food, they can't stop you from eating the food that you're growing. If you're going to grow your own food, I do it hydroponically indoors. Because where I live, the ground outside the building where I live um, has a lot of arsenic. Arsenic and lead. It's unhealthy. Very unhealthy. I can grow pretty flowers. But I shouldn't grow anything that I'm expecting to eat or consume. Just shouldn't do that. 
How do I know that? Because someone had someone from the university come out, test the soil, so I know what was up. Because I had to be very careful about what I put in my body. So that's a positive solution that works for me. It doesn't work for everybody. There are some people who kill everything they try to grow. Sorry, I know you're out there. I feel for you. You may just need to take a deep breath and take a little time and figure stuff out. Not overwatering your plants for one thing and not overcrowding them and watching what you put together. Because like they say, birds of a feather fly together, flock together, you know. You lie down with dogs, you're gonna get up with fleas. So there's the good and there's the bad to how things are done. And, and you have to really be careful about what plants you're associating with other plants. If you've got kids, you say, well, I don't think you should be ha hand hanging out with Bobby and Joe down the street because they are trouble. You know, kid may not understand, but you know because you've grown up and you've lived life and you know that there's good and bad, positive and negative in a lot of people in a lot of situations. It's the same with our food and our body as far as the growing thing goes. But back again to the food shelves. Many food shelves are shutting down. You know, just contacted, you know, some have contacted me and said, on a Tuesday or Wednesday, hi, just to remind you, we'll be there Saturday to give out those bags of food to all your waiting customers there. But this will be our last day because we're done. Funding is gone. What happened to the funding? Who knows? We send so much overseas and here and there and everywhere else. People need to understand that the freebie isn't going to be a continual flow. And if they do start it back up again, who knows? It may be where you're required to do this or have this or have that in order to get that freebie. So instead of getting yourself stuck in a situation where, where you may feel very uncomfortable about the choices and the options you have to make, work on yourself and your ability to grow food. If you're not good at that, learning what the spot in the stores that you can get dried beans, rice, other things that you can get and start to stock up. Because a new bugaboo, I, I just honestly believe it's not coming. I believe it's here with no name. People don't know. But I'm personally seeing people go by the wayside. Left and right, left and right. So, be prepared. Because this summer or fall it might become like 2020 all over again. Like we might be in that 2019 state of mind right now and not even know it. But if things happen, if roads are blocked off, or if barges are stuck out in the port or in the middle of the water somewhere, and the food isn't being brought in to where it can be dispersed and given to you, or you can even go to the grocery store and see it. Remember, you know, a couple of years ago I was doing video, go to the grocery store, there was nothing. Couldn't even find toilet paper, couldn't even find greens or other things that you would think would be grown locally. And the canned goods that were there, I'd pick up the canned good and I'd read it. And it was coming from the other side of the world. Why would we need something coming from the other side of the world when this is supposed to be the land of plenty. But that's me and my mindset and how I think about things. Prepare yourself for whatever's coming up. I'm just saying, prepare yourself. Something's coming. You may not have heard the horn blow yet, but I'm telling you, it's blowing. And if you look around you and see what's happening around you, see what's happening with resources and food, and stop being like this, and being more like this with a mind to work and prepare and get things together for yourself, then you'll have less to worry about. Go buy yourself a bag of onions. Peel off the brown part, slice them thin, 
lay them out on the trays, dehydrate them, and store them. One bag of onions, properly dehydrated and stored, can last you. Can last for a small family. Can last six months. Three to six months, depending on how much you really like dehydrated onions. But I take those things and I take all my different dehydrated foods, put them together in that pot, add a little water, reconstitute them. It comes back to life. The freshness, the goodness, the flavor, the taste, it's all there. And I can have my easily prepared meal. So what are you doing today? To prepare yourself for that which is already here. It's just over on the horizon where you're really not paying attention to it because you're more focused on what's right here in front of your face. What are you doing? Are you ready? Because it's like the story about the, the, the ten virgins, five were wise, five were foolish. The wise ones had the oil for their lamps and they were ready to go in to meet the group. The foolish virgins wa wasted their, their oil and their lamps and they're having a good old time. And then they realize they're out. They want to go to the wise ones and say, oh, give me some of what you got. But no, we all have that same opportunity on whatever level it may be. Because I realize there's some people that are homeless and people that are struggling in a variety of ways. Some people that are relying upon their government assistance and, and their <clears throat> food portion and their financial portion may be much smaller than other people. But you got to learn to work with what you have and take a portion of that. Remember last year in my videos, for any of you that have been watching for a while, um, that some of those things, you know, I would get the box, show you all the stuff I get in the box, you know, show you the recipe cards and what foods are going to be prepared that week. I would take half of a portion of the things that was there and I'd either freeze it or prep it and dehydrate it. So I still have some of that stuff for later. Just because you have something doesn't mean consume, 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 and then be wasteful and then throw stuff away. It doesn't mean overcooking massive amounts of food that's more than you can handle and the people that you know that need food can handle and then having stuff to throw away. Food waste is almost as bad as a lot of other types of waste that we do. In America, anyway, I can't speak for other nations. So what are you doing today? I hope that you're prepared. If you're not totally 100% prepared, I hope you're preparing. Go to the hardware store. Buy a couple of large paint buckets with the lids, because the lids do come included in the price. Fill one of those, and have those things, and, and go to the store and buy lots of beans, whatever type of bean you like. If you're not used to having beans, you know, you can get a variety of bags of beans. And then come back and talk to me or see me again this weekend. I could actually go live sometime if I thought people would actually be on here. I don't know. Um, to show you how to prep those beans, prep that rice, do the flash freeze on the rice, to make sure there's nothing alive and moving up in there. And, and then storing that stuff and then taking those full buckets and then what to do with it next. Thank you for joining me. Please like the video. It, it does make a difference. If, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Share the video with someone. Um, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I really would. And I look forward to sharing some things with you again soon. Thank you for joining me in Danette's Kitchen.